اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ولقد جاءکم یوسف من قبل بالبینات فما زلتم فی شک مما جاءکم به حتی اذا حلک قلتم لن یبعث اللہ من بعده رسولا کذالک یضل اللہ من هو مصرف مرتاب صدق اللہ العظیم The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was generous by nature, not only by monetary definition. When a person is generous by nature, he will have ease in praising, acknowledging, complimenting and extolling the good of others. Some people are generous by monetary, so they can spend a lot. But it's a big ask for them to compliment their better half or their spouse. They will hold back. They will be very selective. They will craft their words. They will premeditate their choice. Yeah, well, actually, I guess in a way, perhaps, probably, yeah, it is something good. What? The books of Hadith have dedicated chapters on manaqib. Manaqib means a whole chapter enumerating the praises of the Prophet Sallallahu regarding Abu Bakr anhu. So you'll have a whole chapter, Babu Manaqibi Abi Bakr. And the whole chapter of Hadith is in which Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Abu Bakr is like this, he's like this, he's like this. Then there's a whole chapter on Aisha radiallahu anha. Then there's a whole chapter on Khadija radiallahu anha. Then there's a whole chapter on the participants of Badr. Then there's a whole chapter. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was generous by nature. And that generosity translated in acknowledging, praising, complimenting. And that doesn't take away any good from you. It actually enhances your good. لَوْ لَبِثْتُ فِي السِّجْرِ مَا لَبِثَ يُوسُفُ لَأَجَبْتُ الدَّاعِي My brother Yusuf alayhi salam was incarcerated. He was imprisoned. And then the, the king had a vision. This is the authentic hadith. And the king had a vision. And he was confused, he was perplexed because if Allah wants to cause, uh, you know, your empire to crumble, then sometimes it's just one dream and that man is restless for life. Uh, there is a bit of a lump here, I'm not sure, I don't know, there's no pain, but doctors say perhaps it could be cancerous. At this stage, preliminary reports suggest that it could be malignant or hopefully benign. The probability and sleep is gone. The anxiety and life comes to a halt. The king has a dream and Allah brings his entire empire to a halt. Inni ara sab'a baqaratin simanin ya'kuluhunna sab'un ijaf wa sab'a sumbulatin khudrin wa ukhara yabisat ya ayyuhal mala aftuni fi ru'yaya in kuntum lir ru'ya ta'burun Inni ara sab'a baqaratin siman I see seven fat cows ya'kuluhunna sab'un ijaf which have been devoured by seven lean cows wa sab'a sumbulatin khudrin and seven ears of green corn and seven others that are dry oh ministers inspire me i'm perplexed and confused there was a person in the gathering there who was part of the cabinet who was part of his people around who had a recollection Ooh, i know of a gentleman in the jail ah oh. Yeah, 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 his name is Yusuf. And if I get hold of him, then he can help me because when I was in the jail, he helped me. Now, I don't want to digress into this here. When he left the jail, Yusuf wasalam, had told him, you are going to be reinstated as the wine bearer because there were two people that were um, incarcerated at that time. And the matter that was under investigation was that they had supposedly poisoned the king's food. And then Yusuf والسلام, said to one of them, you'll be acquitted. And he said to one that uh, you will be found guilty, the long and short. Here again, just for perspective on the richness of the Quran and the teachings of psychology. 
so I, this is Quran. I want to get to a point, but it's 10 points I have to climb to get there. But each one is rich in its own way. So just bear with me, but you know what? You can pick on all or select it, but all is rich. Subhanallah, when Yusuf salam divulges the interpretation to these two inmates, he adopts the highest level of euphemism. So you know what's euphemism? It's the adoption of a polite word versus something crude, brutal, or harsh. So instead of saying he died, you say he's passed on. So Yusuf salam knew who was going to be acquitted and who's going to be implicated. And this is mentioned in Ibn Kathir. But when addressing to them, he said, Amma ahadukuma fayasqi rabbahu khamra wa amma al-akhar fayuslab Listen, one of you will be acquitted and the other one won't be acquitted. So he didn't tell the person, you know what, count your days, it's over. Make your farewell wishes. Uh, you, you, it's as good as done. He said, one of you will be acquitted. Human nature, you latch onto hope till its finest point. But we learn a lesson that even when you want to divulge some information that might not be very pleasant and palatable, uh, pa uh, palatable then as a doctor, appreciate the sensitivity and the emotions of the family. Latching on to hope, but the reality is otherwise. But probably you could reduce the intensity and the gravity of that diagnosis by carefully crafting your words. The Prophet ﷺ said, when you visit someone who is ill, فَنَفِّسُوا لَهُ فِي أَجَلِ Then give him hope, because your kind words won't prolong his life, but will add value to the remaining days of his life. He won't live longer, but the quality of the last days will be more wholesome. He also came, he said, I'm looking good. He says he wants to see me at next Juma at Al Hidayah. So inshallah I'll be discharged soon. Hopeful. So the quality of those days. Anyway, Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam then said to him that uh, after he mentioned it, then he took the one who was going to be acquitted. He said, Udhkurni inda rabbik. Listen, you're going to be reinstated. And once you be reinstated, you'll be in the royal court. You'll have honor and glory. So drop a line in the king's ears. There's an innocent man languishing in the jail. How many of us today use the clout and the power and the authority that Allah has given us to amplify the voice of the innocent? Or is it when we go on to stage, we unfortunately cover ourselves and take care of our own personal interests? Again, look at the rich deduction. I'm still getting to the point. Don't lose me in the way. لأنه نوع من الأسباب المشروعة ولا يكون هذا طلبا للصلة وإنما تورث الصلة المحبة والمحبة تسوغ الاستعانة لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله If I can dissect this, unpack this and I can convey this and you can comprehend this I promise you it's a rich lesson of life so these people, when they came in, they recognized Yusuf alayhi salam and they said, you're a good man, please help us out. We don't know you, but you just look like a good person. May Allah make us such that, uh, you know, we, we can um, project that image. My honorable father once said to me, and I've often mentioned it in my talks, he said, oh my son, carry yourself in such a manner that anyone and everyone finds you approachable and accessible whether you can fulfill his request or not that is according to the circumstances but let it not be that your very demeanor puts him off and he says no i can't approach this man at least let him see in you the personality that no he, he looks approachable sorry brother can i ask you a favor i'm stranded sorry brother can i ask you for a favor i don't have a phone i'm just here a foreigner can i borrow your phone i just want to die nowhere you know during COVID, there was in the neighboring country uh, a very dear friend of mine that was quite critical and fatal and at that time some medication was requested urgently 
So I got hold of the medication in South Africa and I got to the boarding gate, well, to the check-in encounters of, 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 you know, people moving on to that flight. So I went to the counter where people were checking in for that flight to that country. I said, see, you know what? People are just recovering from COVID. Someone has been diagnosed. They need this medication urgently. Here's the medication. Here's the prescription. Here's the official bottle. Here's the prescription from the doctor. There's nothing untowards about this here. No, sorry. Sorry. Mm. Wallahi, nobody flying to the destination took that bottle. Wallahi, nobody. <laughs> what was meant, he passed on. May Allah have mercy on his soul. So we learn from this here. These people came to Yusuf alayhi salam. They asked him for help us in our dream. Today I received two emails of someone asking for dream interpretation. It can leave you fairly uneasy, confused, you know what, perplexed. What, where, how, do I, what do I make of this here? So Yusuf alayhi salam selflessly conveyed to them the interpretation. When one of them were leaving, he said to him, you're going to be reinstated. So please put a word in that there's an innocent man languishing in the jail. We learn from this mutual, this is what the scholars say, follow my pattern here. From this mutual support structure, yesterday they approached Yusuf alayhi salam for help. Today Yusuf alayhi salam approached him for help. Fihi anna al-isti'anata bil-ibad khususan mimman ahsana ilayhi fi kashf al-shada'idi mimma la ba'sa bihi. We learn from this to draw help or to ask assistance from someone, more so a person whom you have previously aided and assisted, mimma la ba'sa bihi, is something that is acceptable and approved by the teachings of Islam. لِأَنَّهُ نَوْعٌ مِّنَ الْأَسْبَابِ الْمَشْرُوعَةِ because it is part of the recognized system of humans to assist each other. وَلَا يَكُونُ هَذَا طَلَبًا لِلصِّلَةِ This will not constitute seeking uh, remuneration and compensation for your kindness. وَلَا يَكُونُ هَذَا طَلَبًا لِلصِّلَةِ وَإِنَّمَا تُورِثُ الصِّلَةُ الْمَحَبَّةَ وَالْمَحَبَّةُ تَسُوغُ الْإِسْتِعَانَةَ But rather in the world in which we live, kindness begets kindness. Empathy begets empathy. So we are a, 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 a creation that are mutually dependent on each other. So here's a reflection. Allah is sufficient for everyone. And most sufficiently for his Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But what did Allah say to his Nabi? Ya ayyuhan Nabi, yu hasbuka Allahu wa man ittaba'aka min al-mu'mineen. O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah is sufficient for you and the believers are sufficient for you. This is one interpretation of the ayah. The other interpretation is Allah is sufficient for you and Allah is sufficient for the believers. So anyway, this person went in and he forgot about Yusuf alayhi salam. And then when he realized, years later, this is human nature, unfortunately. You move in good, things are good. You forgot his phone number. Uh, you, you just ideally omitted it or overlooked it or excluded it or whatever happened and then when the king had a dream and a vision he had a recollection I, I, I need your focus at this point okay can I ask our little young boys to just give the water out and settle down Jazakallah Barakallahu Fikr okay so when the king had a dream and he said who can help me this person realized that there was someone in the jail. Okay. Jazakallah. Please just keep focus. It's very important. And we need to process this and comprehend it on holistically. So this person recalled that I know someone in the jail. Now, can you imagine the confidence he had 
in the caliber of Yusuf, knowing that I defaulted on the request of this man and years have lapsed in the interim, but I now need to knock his door for a favor and I know he is such a selfless individual, notwithstanding my mistake, he will still oblige to my request. You say, hey, you know what, I need a doctor urgently. I know it's after hours. Hey, I got a cousin, but hey, never mind. Eh? <laughs> never mind. Ah, we don't share the best of relationships. I know of someone, but ah, this is the number. We don't say, I gave it to you. I'm not involved. You try, but he's an expert. But hey, you know what, his nature, I don't know. What was the nature of the, Sayyidina Yusuf I'm still coming back to the point. I said the Prophet ﷺ was generous by nature. And we are here to acknowledge. We are here to acknowledge. This is the kindness of Allah. That Al-Hidayah has started. Oh, my mind is rushing with so many ayat. Kazarrain akharaja shata'ahu fa'azarahu fastaglaba fastawa ala suqih. Do you know the description of the Sahaba in the Injil? Well, the Quran says that Allah described the companions of the Prophet ﷺ in the Injil like a seed that sent forth its shoot. This is the words of the Quran. Allah described the companions of the Prophet ﷺ in the Injil. ذَلِكَ مَثَلُهُمْ فِي التَّوْرَاتِ وَمَثَلُهُمْ فِي الْإِنْجِيلِ كَزَرْعٍ and the similitude and the analogy and the example of the companions in the Injil, Kazarin, like a seed, Akhraja Shatta, it sent forth its shoot. Now, when it just pierces through the ground, in Allah, Faliqul Habbi wa Nawa, in Allah, Falik, Falikul Isbah, Kul Aoudu bi Rabbil Falak. The crack of dawn, the flush of dawn, the pierce of dawn. Faliqul Isbah, Allah says, as the morning is piercing through. Allah pierces the earth and that's how that seed grows. So Allah says the companions were like a seed that sent forth its shoot. Like, zarwin seed, plantation. Akhraja, produce. Shat'ahu, its shoot. Fa'azarahu. But when it came out, it was weak, it was flimsy, it was fickle, it was feeble. But with the passage of time, فَآزَرَهُ It strengthened it. فَآزَرَهُ فَاسْتَغْلَبَ Then it became firm, it became strong, it became like a trunk, it became anchored. فَاسْتَغْلَبَ فَاسْتَوَى عَلَى سُوقِهِ Now it stood firm on its, uh, on its uh, you know, trunk. يُعْجِبُ الزُرَّى It has flourished, it has blossomed. تُؤْتِي أُكُلُهَا كُلَّ حِينٍ بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهَا this garden is lushful, it's green, but it started off from one seed. So this 20 odd years ago had sent forth its shoot. And then it became for azara. Then it became for staglav. Then it is now for stawa ala suqi. And today it is yu'jibu zurra. Today it is yu'jibu zurra. Yu'jibu zurra means impressive to the tiller, appealing to the farmer. Awesome to the onlooker. Oh wow. Oh, this is amazing. Well, ask those who planted the seed. Ask those who planted. You know, for anybody else, a child is walking. But for the parents, the first ah oh, is thinking, oh mashallah, run. Oh. That baby step, you were worried. He couldn't take the first two steps and then he took it. Or he couldn't speak and he passed the milestone of speaking. You went into panic mode. And a little later he started speaking and you're crying. And today Allah has allowed his tongue to flow. Those emotions of that parents, only they understand. So those who were in the initial stages of the challenges, the cold nights, the hiccups, the glitches, the snags, the lack, etc. And to, to see this garden flourishing, the joy they would have is only known to them. So we celebrate the joy uh, that Allah has made this happen. When uh, Abdul Qais, the delegation, came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I'm coming back to the incident of Yusuf Alayhi Salaam. It's just having an influx of all these other thoughts in the context. So we allowing that to flow, inshallah. And it's part of the discussion. So this delegation came. This delegation came. We don't cut ribbons. We don't pop balloons. We don't blow horns. But we praise Allah and we congratulate each other. 
We don't cut balloons. We don't pop balloons and cut ribbons and blow horns. Our joy, our accomplishment is we congratulate each other and we credit the grace to the Almighty. So this delegation came, Abdul Qais, and they all were anxious to meet the Prophet Wasallam, and rightfully so. You can imagine that excitement, that anticipation, that, that euphoria that would overwhelm a person in the company and in the presence of the Prophet Wasallam. But there was a companion by the name of Mundir radiallahu anhu. He settled his conveyance, he tied his luggage, he attired himself, he attended to everything, and then very gradually, systematically, at his appropriate time, he then made his way to the Prophet ﷺ. They all came quick, you know, excited, overwhelmed, enthusiastic. And the Prophet ﷺ observed him. He said, I've been watching all of you. And I observed the system and the discipline in you. I must tell you, fika khaslatain, yuhibbuhum Allah. You've got two qualities. Allah is very fond of these two qualities of yours. So today, when we celebrate, we credit it to Allah. This is what the Prophet of Allah did. He recognized the good in the person and he acknowledged it. Look at the humility of the Sahaba. Today, if somebody tells us, Masha Allah, you know what? You remind me of this Mufti Sab. Subhanallah, you remind me of so and so's recitation of the Quran. Sometimes people will say, Oh, well, you're not the first person to tell me. <laughs> no, man, no, man, you can't do better, man. That's conceited, that's inflated. That is why I always tell people don't say, Make dua, Allah keeps us humble. Because that's a claim of humility, which is arrogance. You don't say, make dua Allah keep me humble. So it means you're humble. Humility is strained. Just when you claim it, you lost it. Make dua Allah make me humble. Not may Allah keep me humble. Because if I say Allah keep me humble, that means I'm humble. I'll just make dua Allah keep me humble. No, 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 I don't know if I'm humble. In fact, on the reverse, I have more proof to say I'm not. Look at the humility of this companion. When the Prophet ﷺ said, you've got these two amazing qualities. He said, oh Prophet of Allah, do I naturally possess this? Or have I inculcated this? Wow. Meaning intrinsically, has mother nature instilled this in me? Has Allah instilled this in me and I was born with this? Or is something I developed? Look at the, the distinction, the differentiation. That is why I always say, Sahaba have asked all the questions and the Nabi of Allah has given all the answers. It's for me and you to read it, to understand it. The hadith is in Bukhari, O Prophet Wasallam, I do a good action. I do it for Allah. I don't do it for people. But when people praise me, I enjoy the praises. It's a frank, honest, candid question a companion asked the Prophet Wasallam. You say when people praise you, do you enjoy it? No, no, not at all. But the Sahabi is saying he's enjoying it. Well, what do you mean you're not enjoying praises? You just say, mashallah, look at his sajda. Oh, that sajda is just going on now. It's just prolonged. So the Prophet said, Tilka ajilu bushra al-mu'min. That is the advanced glad tidings for a believer in this world. I'm doing it for Allah. But when people are, because humans are by our nature. That is why the ulama say, I don't want to get too intricate and too delicate here. The Quran did not impress upon us to seek protection from the jealous person. Hear me out. The Quran did not impress upon us to seek protection from the envious person. But the Quran impressed upon us to seek protection from the envious person when he starts venting his envy. Because if the Quran had to impress upon us to seek protection from the envious, then in essence, we seek in protection from every human because mortals and humans by design intrinsically are envious creatures. Because envy has positive energy, it propels you to greater heights. If there's no envy in the human, we'll be stagnant creatures. Am I getting too philosophical? This is getting too heavy. Just tell me, I just land. 
Let's make a nose landing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you processing? Okay, can you nod your head a bit more? Thank you, I love that, bro. Yeah. Oh Allah, save me from the envious. When he starts displaying and venting his envy. But envy principally, intrinsically, inherently, it is synonymous to the human composition. And to that point, it's positive. Because, oh, what beautiful Quran. And again, bring it up to the donation here. La hasada illa fithnatayn. La hasada illa fithnatayn. The Prophet wasallam said, envy two people only. One whom Allah has given wealth, and Allah is accepting his wealth for the causes of deen. Who's going to, inshallah, make a commitment here and become the envy of us all? 500 pounds. Barakallahu fikum. Mashallah, Mawlana, takbir. Mashallah, barakallahu fikum, ahsanallahu ujurakum. Subhanallah, let, let, let that momentum go. Another person, inshallah. Another brother for this masjid and the, 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 the project that is going on. The longer you take, the longer the program gets delayed. You want to hear quickly and time is short? Call is yours. We just, we, you know, mud air refueling. Mud air refueling, it's it's an evolving world, IA or AI. Inshallah, one more brother, 500, inshallah. I can see your hand moving awkwardly, uncomfortably, going halfway up. Hafiz Hamza, did you see what I said? Barakallahu feekum. Hayyakallah ya Ustad. Hayyakallahu ya Ustad. May Allah bless you. May Allah bless you. Subhanallah. When Sayyidina Uthman came and donated, he said, Mi'ata ba'irin bi ahlasiha wa aqtabiha. 100 camels laden from my side. And then the Prophet of Allah exhorted again. Then Sayyidina Uthman didn't say, Now the Nabi of Allah is talking to you, I'm over. It's for you now, not me, I'm done. That's how we say, hey, he's talking to you. He gave again, and then he came and dropped the coins. And the Prophet started flipping the coins. You can never translate this. Uthman, may Allah forgive your minor, your major, your past, your present, your future. That is why Allah told the Prophet وسلم, when you take from them wealth, then make dua for them because your dua in their favor is a great source of comfort. And the ulama have written based on this ayah, whenever anybody makes a donation, then it is advisable to make dua for them. Pray for them. Your prayer is a source of sakina, comfort. I mean, you say, my mom made dua for me, my dad. Imagine Allah's Nabi made dua for you. Like, you know that incident of that woman who got married where the Prophet wasallam had told her to get married and she accepted that this was the proposal given to her by the Prophet of Allah and the Prophet wasallam said Allahumma subba alayha subba wa la taj'al aishaha kadda Oh Allah let good fall in her lap in every form and divert all unpleasantness from her totally wa la taj'al aishaha kadda the Ansar say, we seen a lot of women got married. We didn't see a more happy woman than this woman. It's about happiness. MashaAllah, this community is thriving, as Karisab said. Recently, I spoke at a masjid in the UK. Very simple. They were renting a facility, etc. But a very united community. The next day when I spoke at the event, I said, you know what? This community, in that context, to me, is like a family living in a rented house but it is a happy family it is a family living in a because it was a very small simple basic whatever they were putting together a small simple basic but in a happy context and it's not owning the place it's been happy 
The house needs to bring you that sense of happiness. So coming back to that hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the companion asked, he said, O oh Prophet of Allah, do I have these two qualities in me naturally or have I inculcated it? He said, no, Allah has blessed you with it naturally. Subhanallah. He said, Alhamdulillah, alladhi jabalani ala khullatayn. Alhamdulillah, like you know certain people from certain country, some are blessed with a good voice, some are blessed with good handwriting, some are blessed with good oratory, some are blessed with... It's like synonymous to certain types of people. Of course, there might be exceptions and individuals, but you say you're coming from this place, oh, it's known about these people, it's known about these people. Alhamdulillah, alladhi jabalani ala khullatayn. All praise belongs to the Almighty who has created within me two qualities which is beloved to him. So we are grateful to Allah that he has allowed this institution to evolve to this point. And we ask Allah to allow this to continue till the end of time. Ameen Ya Rabbil Alameen.